Hi everybody, it's Jesse Lemieux here from Pacific Permaculture. I'm a permaculture designer and educator, full-time. I've been making it my career for the last five or six years. And uh, I've been around the world doing this kind of stuff and seen pretty much anything you can think of when it comes to applying permaculture. The unfortunate thing about permaculture is that a lot of people think that it can only be applied to the broad acre, that it's only for large holdings or only if you own a piece of land or something like that. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's just not the case because I myself am renting an apartment and all I have for gardening space uh, here in the very present moment is this little patio. When I teach a full-length permaculture design certificate, uh, we do a whole section on water and actually covers about two days from classroom theory to outdoor hands-on practicality where we actually out digging around in soil. And one of the important principles of water is that it seeks its own level and that is the driving force in all of nature. So water uh, is required to get things to grow and uh, it has this amazing ability to seek its own level and that's actually what we're gonna work with in this little video that uh, we planned out for you here today is water seeking its own level and a constant and steady moisture supply to get really, really, really good vegetable production. Today we're gonna set up something that's known as a wicking bed planter box. This is obviously a container garden versus an in-ground garden. Now, I've never really been a big fan of container gardening. I've always liked to have my garden in the ground because plants, when they're in the ground, can send their roots to go and find whatever they need. The problem with a container garden is, is you got to make sure they have everything they need in the container. And the research that I've done has told me that the way to get really, really good vegetable production out of your containers is to make sure they've got a really top-notch soil and to make sure that they have a constant and maintained moisture supply. Herbs and flowers that have been bred and grown in containers don't really need that, but if we want to get good, clean, healthy vegetable production out of our container gardens, we need to make sure that they got a constant supply of moisture. Now you can do that one of two ways. You can do that by watering three times a day. For instance, a tomato plant on a really hot sunny day can use a full gallon of water a day. So you can water multiple times a day or you can make a really innovative thing, which is all the rage in container gardening, and particularly in permaculture circles, which is a wicking bed. And today that's what I'm going to show you how to do. I'm going to show you how to set up one of these wicking beds. I have two styles of wicking beds here. This one is a, a retrofit bin that has drain holes in the bottom, and you can do that kind anywhere. If you look back at one of my previous videos on patio garden, or a bow and eye patio garden, there's a little demo on how to set one of these beauties up. But today what we're going to show you is how to make one of these. One of these that doesn't have this spout that just waters um, from the rain and then when it's not raining there's a little hole down on this side that we can water. So I'm going to show you how to make these. Uh, it's pretty easy and can be made with uh, any materials. I'm going to show you how to make it with a rubber made bin. Okay, so you're going to need some materials obviously to put this together. Um, as I mentioned previously, the two most important elements are constant moisture supply and a really good potting mix. I've taken to making my own potting mix. You need a good supply of it. We, uh, we make our own potting mix is one part peat, one part vermiculite, and one part of our very own worm castings. So we know that this is a biologically active, rich potting soil. We also amend this with a little bit of rock phosphate, a little bit of green sand or kelp meal, and a little bit of blood meal. So we've, we've got a really, really good potting mix that we know is going to be moist, but well drained and nutrient rich and biologically active. So that's one thing that we need. We've got our potting mix. For tools, you'll find a cordless drill useful. It's not, an, it's not essential, but it's useful. Uh, for just general work around the garden, this, uh, this is a Japanese gardening knife. It's also referred to as a hori hori. You can pick these up at Lee Valley. I like to have a nice pair of Felcos around. I think um, buying any other type of pruner is a bit of a waste of money, then none of them ever seems to work as well as the Falcos do. This is the nursery industry standard. And then a nice sharp knife. I've got my, my sharp little gardening knife here, and then uh, I've got this one. So I've always got two knives kicking around. Next, to make our planter bin, you'll need a Rubbermaid container with its lid. You'll need, this is agricultural cloth, but a little bit of burlap will do, even, even some old cotton cloth. And then you need some form of containers. These work really well. 
and you'll need about six of them in total. These yogurt containers work really well. And in, in my case today, I'm going to use these one gallon pots. So I've got six of these one gallon pots. Okay, so before I get going showing you how to put this all together, I'm just going to show you how one of these bins functions. So in this bin here, there's actually the top of the lid. We've cut it so it fits. And it's, it's sitting right about there, resting on top of those containers down below. Right here we cut this hole, and so this is this hole is simultaneously the point where we can water, but also where it drains out, so we don't fill the whole bin with water when it's raining, because that would drown the plants. What we want is the plants to have constant access to moisture, not be flooded and inundated all the time. So just to show you how this works, this is how we water it, and you can see it's already at capacity, because the water is flowing right back out. Okay, now it'll stay at capacity as long as there's rain falling, but when it, we have a long, hot, dry spell, I can store something like 15 to 20 liters worth of water in the base of here, and then basically I can go away for the weekend and not have to worry about my plants because they'll be constantly supplied with water. So I'm going to show you how to put one of these together today. Okay, so the first step is to get your containers in the bottom set up. Now in this case, we're going to be using uh, one gallon planter pots, some old one gallon planter pots, and they're already set up for us because they've already got these holes in the bottom. So we're just going to set those in there and do it like that. We could do it with these one liter yogurt containers. Now you notice the difference in size between the two. Okay. So with the one gallon pots at the bottom, we're actually going to get more water storage. So if we wanted a, a crop with a that needed a deeper soil depth, we could go with these, but we get less water storage. We're using tomatoes, which uh, probably don't need that much soil depth, but we want to make sure they have a, a really, really large constant water supply. But if you wanted to, to do, use the yogurt containers, you just line them in the bottom like this. Now, the other thing that needs to be done if you're going to use yogurt containers is you've got to make sure that you drill holes. In each of the containers, so that when they're sitting in here, water can fill into the containers as well. Okay, so here we have the lid for a bin, and what we want is to cut this part out. Right along the top, we want to take that whole rim off so that this plate that's left over will fit down and sit on top of our containers or our pots or whatever it is we choose. So one way that you can make this a little bit easier on yourself is to drill pilot holes in each of the corners. take a nice sharp knife and this stuff really does cut like butter and you cut all the way along that edge from hole to hole. Now that fits on top of our pots. So that gets discarded. I haven't found a good use for those yet. And now this lid here is fitting on top of our pots. Hi. Sometimes when we're doing things that we've never done before or we haven't done very often, we make mistakes. And that's okay because mistakes are great learning opportunities. And I've made a small mistake in this. So here's this fantastic opportunity for us to all learn a little bit from my mistake. So what I've noticed is is that this gap here along the edges is a little bit wide. And so I would advise that we go ahead and we try and make this as tight as possible so we leave a little bit more meat on the lid. So as you can see from around here, I use a lot of Rubbermaids. So I got a lot of spare lids kicking around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a few minutes here, I'm gonna cut one tighter and then I'll show you the end result. So I'm done with my cutting now, and I've got my, my new, improved version of the lid. As you can see, I left that, that little sloped um, edge that it has, and it fits in here much more tightly. I have to actually push it down, and so we get a much 
much better fit that way. You can see that's nice and secure and that's going to do a really good job of holding the soil up for us. Okay, so the next part is the most important aspect of setting up a wicking bed. You need to have a spot that controls the level of water so that it can drain out and not flood your plants. But we also want to maximize the amount of water we have stored below. So what we need to do is look at our bin without the lid on and that is where the lid's going to sit and the soil will just rest just above that. So we want to make our drain hole right at that level there. So what I do is I take my drill and I drill a hole to the outside right at the level I'm after. Then I come out and I want to drill a triangular pattern of holes so I can make a little triangle hole that I can use with my watering can so that I can fill up water right there. And then all I do is I take my knife and I cut along between the holes. And voila! I have my drain hole. It sets the level of the water. That's also the hole that I can fill up with. So the water fills in through the hole there and the water will come up to this level here and then it will begin to drain out. Okay, so start. now we need to do the next bit, the second most important part. We're going to set the tray for the soil in. And now we need to cut holes for, so that the moisture can be allowed to wick up into the soil which is going to fill the rest of this. And so what I like to do is I usually do one in one corner and one kitty corner and that way we get an, an even soaking of the whole thing. And so this is pretty straightforward. You just get a knife and you cut a hole through the the plastic as you can see it gets down into one of those containers there and you can actually you can bring the hole out so that it's close to or the same size as the pot so make I make one hole there and I'm gonna do another one in the corner here Okay, so I've got my two holes cut down into my containers and I'm about ready to start filling with soil but before I do that I take my burlap or my cotton or in this case Rime and I use it and I just shove that into the gaps around the edge so that the soil doesn't leak through. So I just take that and fill in all the gaps that I have here just to make sure that the soil doesn't end up flowing down into the reservoir below. Now, I don't use my very best soil in this step because I want to keep my high quality soil up where the plant root zone is. But the principle we're working with here, or the, the, the issue we're working with, or the thing that we're working with is water's adhesive and cohesive properties. Water will literally crawl up something if it has something to stick to. And it, so we're working with the principles that if we have water in the bottom here and we have a nice loose soil medium up top, that water will wick up by something called capillary action. So in order for that to take place, we actually need to have columns of some kind of substance that the water will stick to down in to our pots here. And so in this case, I'm using a mixture of peat and vermiculite. And I just in these pots that I have down below. Remember, there's six of them. 
but I've only got two. There's only two that are part of the wicking columns and I just take those pots and I don't really fuss over it too much. I just fill them up and I pack it in there, not too tightly. And so now when we fill this up with water and it's full on the bottom, the water will wick its way up. It will wick its way up from the water reservoir below and into the soil above. Okay, so almost the last phase, but not quite. The last phase is obviously planting. The second to last phase is putting our high quality soil mix in and that's pretty straightforward. I've got it right here in the bin. And I'm just gonna pick it up and transfer it in to about that depth there. Okay, so there's our completed wicking bed bin and it's ready to be planted up. It's positioned where we want it to be. In this case, we're gonna be growing tomatoes. We've chosen this spot on our patio because it's at the north end and it's it's at actually the far north west corner of the patio which gets the longest sunlight because the roof above shades through the early part of the morning and that is the first place that sun comes up. We'll also have the opportunity to grow our tomatoes up along the railing and we'll be able to build ourselves a little rain cover off the railing so we can keep those um, late season or the sorry the, the early rainy season rains off which are so hard on tomatoes here on the west coast. Also too it's been found that uh, red reflective surfaces near your tomato plants will get better ripening so that's a little bit of uh, synchronicity a little serendipitous synchronicity that we have taking place there along that railing so that's the spot we've chosen. We've uh, actually started our seedlings down here in the corner and we use soil blocks because we think that they get the healthiest best seedlings around. Uh, they're totally non-root bound as you can see there's this beautiful root mass there that's just waiting to find soil contact so what I'll do is I'll plant a few of these up for you right now. When I plant my tomatoes I like to take the two bottom leaves off and I plant them right up to there. I put the soil right to there and you'll get beautiful rooting off of the stem. So we're gonna we're gonna just take these and just stick them into the ground right now. Okay so it's pretty easy planting into one of these containers. I just dig down a little ways, plop it in and put the soil back and then I'm gonna reach down here I'm gonna grab another one. Look at that root mass just beautiful stuff. Look there's a worm there. Our potting mix, everything we use here when we're making our soil blocks is our potting mix is uh, biologically imbibed by our worms. They are absolutely everywhere. There's this huge population of worms that lives everywhere in our system up here on the patio, really maxing out the soil biodiversity. I'll put that one in the ground. Take those leaves off. That one in the ground. And I've got a few basil plants down here. This is the nice part about patio gardening is everything's close at hand. And I'm going to stick some basil plants in right in front of those tomatoes. I like to pack them nice and tight because I like my basil. Just as easy as that. There. And there's a planted up wicking bed. All that remains now is for us to give it a nice watering on top so we can get some good rooting action and then to fill up the reservoir down below. Thank you for joining me today.